Hey guys, welcome back to the Linux Essential Series for Hackers. In this video, we're going to be talking about uh, process and service management. Uh, so we're going to be talking about uh, lots of tools that you can use to uh, to manage processes uh, and also manage services, right? So these this is a very important video, pretty much I think one of the most important videos in this series because of of uh, the power that that comes with it. So. Uh, first of all, let's let's take a look at uh, some of the utilities that you can use uh, to to manage system resources and to view the current processes uh, and uh, you know just view resource consumption in regards to the processes that are consuming the most and consuming the least. Uh, now, by default, all Linux systems come with a utility called Top, right? And uh, you can pretty much get some information uh, about it by using uh, the what is command. So again, it tells us that Top displays Linux processes. So you can hit Top, and again, as you can see, this gives you information regarding uh, your your system resources, the consumption, and the various processes that are running. Uh, the uh, the owner of the processes in terms of the user. So you have your process ID, very important there, that can be used to manage the process either to kill it. Uh, or to stop it. Uh, you then have the user here that it belongs to. Uh, you then have the CPU and memory consumption, uh, the time uh, and the command itself. Uh, so again, you can essentially use this to manage all your processes. However, the uh, a better utility, uh, custom utility that you can install by with, with uh, whatever package manager you're using, uh, and that is the HTOP uh, utility. So again, we can install it, we can install it here. I already have it installed so again we can clear this and we'll say what is htop you can see that this is an interactive process viewer so if we open up htop uh, you can see that first of all it gives you your processor usage uh, in regards to how many cores you have so i have uh, six cores here and it gives you their utilization in terms of percentage you then have your memory usage so it gives you a total usage uh, i have about 16 gigs here and i'm currently using six gig uh, you, it also tells you your swap usage. Uh, so I have a swap uh, set to about two gigs. Uh, don't get angry at me. I know a lot of people are against swap nowadays. Uh, it gives you the amount of tasks, um, uh, the amount running, the load average, uh, and the uptime of your system. So very useful information. It also sorts it out. Uh, it sorts the information out, uh, you know, similar to what we had. So we have the process ID and you can sort that out. Uh, chronologically so you can say you can just click on it and it loads it up from the first process with the process id of one you then have the user so you can again switch from all the user uh, the user accounts that are uh, that, that these uh, processes are running uh, under you then have your cpu usage so if i click on cpu that displays uh, the the process that is currently using the most uh, cpu usage uh, again, I can click on memory and it tells us that uh, Google Chrome is using the most memory. That's uh, that's not a surprise. And of course, uh, we can just go back to CPU usage and uh, you can see that OBS is currently running right now, which makes sense uh, as that is using the most CPU. Right. So uh, this is a utility that you can use to pretty much manage your processes. Now, before we take a look at how to use it, because this simplifies the process, let's take a look at, uh, you know, how you would actually view these uh, the, the resource consumption like RAM usage, for example. To view RAM, uh, RAM usage, we would simply type in free. And uh, that again tells you, uh, if we type, you know, we just use the man uh, pages here, you can see that free uh, displays the amount of free and used memory in the system. So again, you can display this uh, in, in regards to, uh, to, 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 to the output you want. So if we say free H, that prints it out in human uh, readable format so you can see we have total used free shared uh, the cache and available and of course also for your swap so that's uh, one of the quick ways you can view how much ram you're using um, now let's talk about processes right so processes uh, need to be understood as you need to separate them between you need to separate processes and services right so processes uh, are viewed with the ps tool so again uh, ps uh, gives you a report uh, it gives you a report of this uh, or it essentially gives you a snapshot of your current processes that you have running all right so if i just say ps uh, this is weird because many users actually uh, i've pointed this out so why does it only give you two processes well you haven't specified any arguments in regards to what processes you want to see so what it's going to give you is it's simply going to display processes that are in your current shell and you can see that the two that it has is the bash uh, and the the actual command that you ran so that makes sense now if we want to display all processes we would simply say psaux uh, and you can view all of this syntax uh, from the man page, which is actually recommended here. I'm using the BSD style or the BSD syntax. So again, 
uh, to see every process on the system using standard syntax you can use that i'm using as you can see right over here bst syntax so i'll, I'll continue uh, with that so i can say psaux and i can hit enter all right so this is a lot of information here this is essentially giving you a snapshot of all the processes that you have running on your system so we can scroll all the way to the top and again uh, the uh, it's sorted out into a table with various columns so again you have the user the process id and it starts chronologically uh, but the great thing about tools like htop is it gives you a, a dynamic view of uh, of the processes how much they're consuming on a second by second basis uh, cpu usage memory etc but this is a snapshot remember so again this can give you an idea of all the processes that are currently active however if you want a dynamic idea of uh, the current uh, system resource consumption use a utility like top or htop this just gives you a snapshot all right the key thing we're looking for here is the, uh, the pid because uh, we won't talk about managing processes right so let's say um i want to start a service here uh, so i say sudo system uh, control uh, system control uh, i'm going to say start and i'll say tor i want to start the tor service here and then i say ps aux i can also grab the output here and i can say i'm looking for tor uh, so give me all processes with tor right now of course it's going to give us uh, you know various other false positives with the the string of characters tor and you can see the inclusion of that within storage but uh, if we just go to the bottom here uh, you can see we have um, we have the user bin tor uh, binary being used here, so that looks interesting. And yeah, so if we take a look at the process ID, we can see it's, it has a process ID of seven six zero four. So if we say uh, sudo uh, system uh, control, uh, we say status uh, status tor, and we hit enter. Um, sorry about this guy. System uh, control, and we hit uh, we take a look at the status of the of the Tor service. You can see that it's active, it's loaded and active. So if we want to kill this process, all we need to do is uh, get the process ID. In this case, it's gonna be 7604. And all we need to do is say, uh, we, we just say kill. And uh, you may want to prepend this with uh, root privileges or the sudo command. So we say sudo kill uh, 7604, 7604 and we hit enter. And now if we take a look at the, uh, the, the, the Tor service, you can see it's still running. Now, the reason I did this is because the, you need to differentiate between a service and a process because a service will re, re, uh, reinitiate or reinitialize itself, right? So let's take a look at uh, the uh, let's take a look at all the processes here, and we can take a look at more realistic options available to us, right? So I'll give you an example here. Um, so let's grab for SSH, and we'll say uh, grab SSH. Um, Let's see, we have the SSH daemon here, um, which is running as a process ID of 5687, right? And um, we also have the, uh, yeah, that's pretty much the one we're looking for. We also have the SSH agent here. So what we can do is we can say um, sudo kill 1969, and we can also say sudo kill 5687, right? So we can say 5687, kill that and then uh, we say system system uh, control and we say uh, status ssh and we hit enter you can see that ssh uh, is currently uh, loaded but inactive dead right so uh, th that's just a simple way of managing processes now we can do the same thing uh, with htop and i'll show you how to do this many people actually skip this but htop is as of a much easier way of doing this so when you launch htop, uh, you can pretty much filter through the results, but a great way of searching for services by their name instead of using grep is by using the F3 key, uh, after which it will bring up this little search bar and I can search for things like Tor. Uh, and if I use a space, uh, it pretty much uh, should give me all the results. So let me just do that one more time. So I say Tor uh, and um, we can see that the process was closed, but the, the service is still running. So let's try another uh, another process here. Um, let's see if we have, um, let's see, if, let's actually work with htop. I just want to show you this. So if, if we click on htop and it's highlighted yellow, we can actually kill it by using uh, F9. So if we hit F9, we can send various signals to this process. So we can say signal quit, signal kill. So if we say signal kill, uh, that's option nine and we hit enter, uh, you can see that that will pretty much kill the process. And you can see that it actually points that up right over here. And, uh, you can see that the, the output is messed up and I shouldn't have probably done that, but I wanted to demonstrate the power of htop here. 
So if I go into HTOP one more time, and uh, now again, it's giving us our dynamic results. So we can pretty much use that same uh, syntax to manage our services really easy. And many people go over this. It's not just a system resource uh, usage uh, utility to actually display how much uh, you know resources you're consuming. It can actually allow you to interact with your services or, or your processes quite well. So again, I can search for any process right over here with name uh, or I can uh, again, I can work with the uh, the resource consumption. So again, I can highlight resource consumption here, uh, memory consumption, etc, etc, right? Now let's talk about service management with system D, right? Because I, I also want to cover uh, system V as well, system V service management, but now the norm is increasingly becoming system D. So it's great to, to actually know how to use this. So if we uh, say man system uh, control, this is the utility that allows us to control. Um, so you can see control the system D system and service manager. So I'll show you how to use it. So if we want to list all the active services, which are going to be a lot, we can say system uh, control and we hit enter. And uh, you can see that we can, you know, we can move down with the uh, your your directional keys. And this gives you an idea of all the services that you have running. And once you have once you're done, we have about uh, 230 lines here and they keep on going as as the, the, the more you you actually go down. So uh, 269 loaded units, um, it gives you all information in regards to all the services you have running. So if we quit, uh, we can also grep. So if we grep here, we say grep uh, SSH and we hit enter. So we have no SSH uh, service running. So if we if we want to start a service like the SSH service, what I can do is I can say um, system control, uh, system control. I say uh, start, and then I uh, I can you know then play around with uh, with what I want to do. So I can say um, I can say start, and then the name of the service. So I can say SSH, and then I can use the tab auto completion here. So again, you can see that we have the SSH socket and the SSH service. So if I wanted to start the SSH service, uh, just give it a few seconds. It does take a while to load this uh, if I use tab auto completion too much. So if I say uh, uh, system control uh, start SSH service and I hit enter, it's going to ask me for my uh, for my password and it's going to this because it requires root privileges. So uh, that has started the SSH service. Now we can again uh, confirm this uh, with, you know, we can say uh, LT here and uh, you can see we have SSH running right over here. So again, we can check the status of the pro uh, of this actual service by running uh, sudo system control and we can say status SSH dot service here and we hit enter. And there we are. So you can see it tells us that the SSH service this is using open SSH. So it tells us it's loaded and active, which means it you can actually use it and it gives you information about it. So uh, the log uh, of events. So again, started uh, SSH uh, listening on port 22, listening on localhost port 22, starting the OpenSSH, uh, OpenBSD secure shell server, uh, and it gives you the various timestamps, right? So that's how to pretty much interact, uh, to how to start and monitor the status of a service if you're having issues with it, right? Now, if I wanted to disable it or to stop it, I could say, um, I could just, uh, I can say stop, uh, and I can say SSH dot service and I hit enter and that will stop the sorry uh, let me just enter my password here that will stop the service if I check the status you can see that it's loaded but inactive and dead now a lot of people ask me how do I uh, run particular services on system startup and uh, you can easily do that with system D so I can say uh, sudo system uh, let's say I wanted to enable the SSH service every time I boot up which is useful so I can say system uh, control um, and then I would say enable, but first I need to check if it's already enabled. So I can say is enabled and then say SSH dot service. And that will tell me if uh, it is currently enabled to, to, to be run on system startup. You can see it tells us that it's currently disabled, which is great. Uh, if I check uh, the Synergy service, I just want to give you an example, a uh, robust example. I hit enter. You can see that uh, on startup, yes, this service is enabled. That's because I use the Synergy service to, uh, for, you know, for my mouse sharing, my mouse and keyboard sharing uh, system. So again, that tells me that, okay, that's enabled. So if we want to enable SSH, what we would say is a pseudo system control and we would say enable and we say SSH dot service. All right, and I hit enter. And you can see it's, it's uh, created the sim link uh, for us uh, in the system D uh, directory here. So uh, if you're using um, 
if you're using system v then you need you need to play around with the init uh, the, the init scripts uh, and you then need to create a symlink but this does it automatically for you so now if we check the uh, is enabled if we check if it's enabled you can see that now it's enabled if i want to disable it from running on startup i would simply say disable uh, because i don't want ssh running this is not a server so i can check it now and we can see it's disabled all right so that's pretty much how to manage uh, you know, services with system D. So that's how to start, stop. Uh, if I want to restart a service, again, I can simply say restart. So let me do that right now. So if I say sudo system control, I say tor, uh, sorry, start, tor, I can hit enter. That will start the tor service. If I want to reload it, I can say reload. All right, and now I can also, um, I can also reload, will reload the, uh, the configuration if i say restart that will simply restart the service with the current configuration so that's a quick tidbit for you if you you can use reload here then that will essentially restart it with the newer configuration so uh, in case you're wondering so i'll just stop this service and i'll just hit enter and there we are all right so that is how to manage services now if you want to uh, if we want to reload the entire uh, the system d daemon what we can say is sudo system uh, control uh we're looking for the daemon uh and we can say reload and we just hit enter and that'll reload the daemon completely uh that's if you're having any issues and you wanted to reconfigure particular services all right now uh, let's talk about system v service management which many of you are familiar with uh, system v is essentially where you say service uh the name of the service which could be tor and then we say start we can say stop and we can say restart, right? Very, very simple. And we can also check the status. So again, say service store start. That will uh, ask, uh, you know, ask me for my administrator privileges. I can say service store uh, status, hit enter. You can see it tells us active loaded. Uh, and then we can say system uh, service store. We can say stop and we can hit enter and that will stop the, the tour service. And we can also say restart and again that will simply restart the tor service there and we can then stop it one more time so that's how to use system v very very simple but in my opinion system d uh, is uh, is the much better alternative to learn now and it's an extremely robust and very very powerful uh, tool to actually learn how to use or tool or utility so very very important stuff in this video let me know if you have any questions or suggestions and i'll be seeing you in the next video